When I first started developing my own film, I was terrified of the process. I couldn't believe that it was something that anybody did on a regular basis because I was so worried about messing up the chemicals or not getting pictures at the end of the whole process. I didn't have the tools in my back pocket and because of that, it felt incredibly intimidating. I wanna go through the process with you on how to develop your film at home and give you the tools in your back pocket in case you wanna use them. The process is good for 35 millimeter or medium format film. It is not the same as developing color film. So do know that in advance, this is specific to black and white film. I started out with an Ilford simplicity pack. I wanted to make sure that developing film at home was something that was for me. This gave me the information that I needed so that I could see whether or not it was a good fit and it was. Something to open your film canister. You can get something online that allows you to do this. These are really great. Having a simple bottle opener works great. And honestly, there's no difference, whichever works for you. The next thing you're gonna need is a canister and a reel. This is light sealed once the top is on. So your film is safe inside here as long as the lid is on top. Patterson does make a plastic version of this. Patterson's plastic reels and plastic canisters are meant to go together just like these metal ones are meant to go with each other as well. A good thermometer and a good pair of gloves. I will go ahead and link all of the products and chemicals down below for you to take a look at. Ilford is a tried and true. You will get good results with their chemicals. When I'm loading my film onto my reels into the canister, I use this PhotoFlex pop-up tent. When you are getting ready to load your film onto your reels, you wanna put all of the necessary things into the tent, zip it up, and then put your hands in the sides of the tent. If you're doing this in the dark, you just need to have everything in front of you. Canister and its lid reels, both rolls of film, my scissors and my canister opener. Now we're going to take the film out of our canister, roll it onto the reel for each roll of film and we're gonna put both reels into our canister and put the lid on. It's a good idea for you to roll some film before you develop the first one on your own because you wanna get a feel for what it's like when you're rolling film onto the reel before you actually do it. You can take old developed film or a test roll that has been developed and you can practice rolling it on the reel a few times before you actually move forward. It's a really helpful process to do that. To take the back of the canister off, there is a male side and there's a female side. You want to pull this side off with either your device that you bought online or you can use a bottle opener. You need to make sure you're doing this either in complete darkness or in a darkroom tent. And you're going to fix it just under this lip here, these bottom ones like this, and you're going to pry it open. All right, back is off. You have a little donut that comes off. Once you pry it open, your film is exposed. You're going to push that male end and you're gonna pull your roll of film out. You'll have this little spool on the inside still. You're going to cut off this leader. You wanna feel for this little curve right here. That's gonna be your indicator of where you should cut. I usually try and cut pretty close to this curve, maybe a few sprocket holes down so that I give myself enough room above the frame of the picture below it. You're gonna be feeling for this in the dark and then you're going to just snip it. And now because that end is nice and straight, you can go ahead and start rolling the film in your tent. Again, all of this is going to be in the dark because your film has not been processed through chemicals yet. If it's exposed to the light, you'll lose your pictures. In order to get the film onto the reel, bow it a little bit, enough so that the corners kind of round a little bit. It's gonna help you slide it into position. You're going to slide your film over so that these hooks grab the sprocket holes. See that here? You know when you pull tension on the other side, 
that the sprockets are holding the film. There's also this kind of reel for loading your 35 millimeter film. And a lot of people like these. It's not my preference, but I'm going to show you how to put the film on in case this is something that you end up getting. To load the film, you're going to pull down on this little paper clip tab and you're going to bow the film the same way you would with the other reel. And then you're just going to slide it on top of that little paper clip underneath this bar. And then you continue to roll the film as you would the other reel. You're going to do like this. Roll, make sure it's nice and smooth. Roll, make sure it's nice and smooth. And I'm pinching these edges so that it goes onto the reel smoothly. You're going back and forth over the film and you're going this way. You can see how it's inconsistent right there. You can feel that when you're rolling the film. So just undo it until you get to a place where it feels like it's smooth all the way across and continue to roll. It's filling more of the spaces in between the metal rings here. And that's how you know that it's filling up properly when you're rolling it. You want to feel like it's expanding as you're rolling it. You can see now it's filled up all of those rings. When you get to the end, you're going to cut off that end of film. Your last frame is going to be much closer to the end of this than it was at the beginning because there is no leader. So you wanna try and cut as close to this spool as you possibly can, again, in the dark. And then it'll just kind of click into place a little bit. So you'll hear it like that. And you still want to double check and run your finger across the top of the film to make sure there aren't any bubbles or ridges or anything like that in it. If your film is like this, it's not going to develop properly. You might rip it when you put it into the canister and it might ruin some of the images. So make sure that you take the time to put it in the reel properly so that it's seated all the way and it's flat. If you've rolled up all of your film and you're at the very end and you realize that it hasn't filled up all of these spaces here, it's just in the middle still, then you need to take the film off of the reel and re-roll it. When your film is rolled onto the reel too tightly, it kind of looks like this. And the film is laying on top of itself, which means that the chemicals are not being distributed over the film properly. It will have these splotches on the film as if you spilled something on it, like coffee or something, but it'll be like a grayish green color. And you'll know because you'll see where the film is like stuck together. Before you start developing your film, it's a good idea to do a pre-wash with water. This water should be at 68 degrees. Make sure all of your chemicals are at 68 degrees before you pour them into your canister and start developing with them. If your chemicals are not the proper temperature, you can create a water bath and put your jugs in them to help bring them to the proper temperature. This is a process that I was taught and it has worked really well for me. You continuously agitate your canister for a minute and then you pour the water down the drain and you proceed with the chemicals as you would normally. You're going to start with developer. You will continuously agitate for the first minute and then you will tap the canister on the counter. You'll wait 30 seconds, agitate for five, tap, wait 30 seconds, agitate for five, tap until you're completed. Then you will do a second water bath for one minute. This is not something that is required, but it helps to stop and remove the developer from your film before you get the stop into the container. Once you are done doing continuous agitation for one minute, you're going to pour the water down the drain and then you're going to pour your stop into your canister. You will continuously agitate your canister with the stop for one minute and you will pour the contents of your container back into its original jug to keep for later. Once you're done with the stop, you're going to use a fixer for eight minutes. And the process for the fixer is going to be the same as the developer. You will continuously agitate for the first minute. You don't have to tap, but it's a good idea to get in the habit of doing that. If you want to, it's not gonna hurt anything. The tapping helps remove any air bubbles that are sitting on top of the film. So continuously agitate for the first minute and then every 30 seconds 
for five seconds until the eight minutes is up. Once you're done with the fixer, you're going to put the contents of your container into either a graduated cylinder or a measuring cup, which is what I've been using, pour it back into its original jug for you to use later. And this is the part where you do the 10 minute water bath. This is going to remove any remaining chemicals that are still on the film to get it nice and clean. Once the 10 minutes is up, you're going to use a photo flow or what Ilford refers to as a wetting agent. The wetting agent is going to be something that helps the film dry evenly and a little quicker, but it also is something that helps reduce the amount of watermarks that end up on your film. Once you're done pulling your film out of the canister, you're going to take it off of the reel, you're going to put your fingers on either side of the film, and then you're going to remove any extra wetting agent or water that is still on the film. You can also leave it and just hang it as is. You're gonna to wanna to hang your film for about 45 minutes until it is completely dry before you do anything to store it. The way you know your film is dry is by slightly pinching a part that doesn't have a picture on it. If it's tacky, then it still needs a little bit more time. Once it's no longer tacky, by pinching it, you're good to go. You wanna make sure that you know a few things about the different chemicals. With stop, it's going to come out yellow. Yellow means that the stop is still good and you can still use it, but once it turns purple, it is no longer usable and you need to discard of it. With Fixer, there's a chemical that you can purchase that I will link down below. You put a few drops into the Fixer and if the drops turn white, it means the Fixer is no longer good. If they stay clear, then you are good to go and keep using it. Another way to test your Fixer to make sure if it's still good is to take a piece of film. You can use something from the end of the spool or the leader that you cut off your film when you were developing it. You drop it into the fix and if it turns transparent, you are good to go. If it stays opaque and it doesn't change at all, you need to go ahead and replace the fix. There is a way to dispose of your fixer and that is something that is good to know and a need to know if you're going to be developing film at home. You can take it to your local lab or you can buy a box of cat litter and pour the fixer into that and then dispose of the cat litter. This helps dry the fixer out and make it less hazardous for the environment. That is how you develop black and white film at home. I hope you learned something today. And now that you have the tools in your back pocket, you're courageous enough to go try it on your own. I will make sure to link everything we used in today's video in the description box down below. In case you are interested, you can find it there. And I have a few more videos coming down the line that I think you're really going to love. I'm going to Europe for the next two weeks and I have some really fun stuff planned for you. So keep an eye out for that. Until next time, I'm Tilly Scholl and thanks for watching.